welcome to the sixth episode of Boulder Community Health's Be Well Saturdays. I'm Gina Simmering, your host, and each month we are delighted to share with all of you health and wellness information in four main categories. Those categories are medicine, movement, nutrition, and mind-body. Today, we will share techniques for managing insomnia, learn creative ways to stay active during a pandemic, get tips for adding more veggies into our diet, and discover meta meditation for balancing emotions. And be sure to stay with us until the end for your opportunity to win a gift basket from Cedar and Hyde in Boulder. So stay with us. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Fanestel. I'm the director of the Center for Mind-Body Medicine at Boulder Community Health. And today we're gonna to talk about insomnia. So uh, I have a quick caveat that mind-body medicine is not really a quick fix. So I'm not planning to cover everything about insomnia and get you sleeping great tonight. Although I am hoping you'll see a couple of ideas that might help you in the short run even, and then leave you with some, uh, yeah, I wanna learn more about this. Uh, so um, I'm gonna mention very briefly sleep hygiene, and now I'm gonna skip over it. You can Google sleep hygiene, you can read about it. It's very important, things that we do to help ourselves sleep better. It, sort of falls into mind-body medicine, but it's not unique to mind-body medicine. It's easy to find inf information about it, and you should look for that. Um, specific things with mind-body medicine are the way we might approach insomnia. Uh, mind-body medicine starts with education. So remember that the first or one big component of mind-body medicine is the idea that we're using the conscious mind to influence some of the automatic things going on in our body, some of the automatic circuits in our nervous system. For that to happen, the conscious mind has to understand what's going on. So education is the first part uh, of, of what we do here. Um, quick education about insomnia. The new neuroscience suggests that we have an ancient threat alarm system deep in our brain, in our subconscious brain, in our autonomic nervous system, the part that runs us on autopilot all the time, we have an ancient threat alarm system uh, that if we don't feel safe, won't let us sleep. So sometimes I refer to this part of my brain as my lizard brain. It's the part that's keeping me alive. And to some extent, it's just like a lizard on a rock. Shadow comes by, boom, under the rock. This part of my brain has one job and only one job to keep me alive and safe. I guess that's two jobs, kind of the same thing. But that's its only job. And it doesn't care how I feel, doesn't care if I sleep tonight. It wants to keep me safe. So if we don't feel safe, we won't go to sleep. Now that's a fantastic threat alarm system. If I'm on the savanna and there's lions wandering around or a threatening other tribe walking around or something like that. It's not a great alarm system if the threat is a busy day tomorrow or a meeting with my boss tomorrow but that's the alarm system we have. And if we're under threat, my subconscious mind says, Ooh, maybe we shouldn't go to sleep. I'm not in such a safe place. So your conscious mind might know that sleep is okay right now. In fact, it'd be good for you. What we wanna do is retrain the subconscious brain that's operating on a more primitive level. So from a mind-body approach, how do we deal with insomnia? We wanna teach this subconscious mind and it learns differently than the conscious mind. It doesn't learn just by, oh, I get the concept. It learns by doing things in a different state of mind, it learns by experience and repetition. So a few mind-body ideas. One, writing exercises. Surprisingly, but tons of data, writing about your feelings and emotions helps you sleep. And people say, well, why would I want to write about that? It just jazzes all this stuff up. No, it's the opposite. When you get things out on a piece of paper, and I call this expressive writing, just writing about feelings and emotions, stream of consciousness. I'm not psychoanalyzing. I'm writing about, I'm worried about my doctor appointment tomorrow, or I'm worried that my, what did my son mean when he said that on the phone in our phone call? Just the little niggly stuff. You're getting it out on a piece of paper, and then you're ripping it up and throwing it away. You're not looking at it later and wondering what's going on. Just the act of getting it out. And that could be something as simple as writing your to-do list tomorrow before you go to sleep. But it could also be writing about feelings and emotions. So quick, easy thing. And, and there, are other, there are a lot of different techniques to doing that. But a very easy one, just writing about feelings and emotions. People are often surprised. Oh, I felt a little tension left my body. 
Uh, second thing, breathing exercises, super powerful um, and very useful at night. Uh, just breathing in general, I'm often surprised at a lot of patients who tell me, wow, how come nobody taught me these breathing exercises? That calms me down way quicker than Valium. Uh, and it gets better and better the more I do it over time, which is the opposite of Valium, which got worse and worse the longer I used it. So I love these. They're easy to do. Uh, it's hard for me to run you through a breathing exercise in this short amount of time. Um, there's a breathing exercise on our website website called Soft Belly Breathing. You click on it, you listen to Elizabeth Hazelwood, who's an RN that works with us, uh, guide you through this. And there's no one magic way to do this, but the reason, one reason from a neuroscience standpoint that breathing works is when you do abdominal breathing, sometimes that's called yogic breathing, um, but this type of abdominal breathing where I take a breath in and my abdomen expands, and on the breath out, my abdomen goes back in. And if you have trouble doing that, making your abdomen go uh, expand on the in-breath and out, uh, go back in on the out-breath, you could put your hand there. As it goes in, abdomen rises, breath out, abdomen falls. And uh, that type of breathing causes the diaphragm to go up and down a little more than breathing with our rib muscles, or we have a lot of muscles that help us breathe. When we do that to our diaphragm, we are directly stimulating the vagus nerve, which is connected to the diaphragm, to the heart, to the lungs, to the it's connected to pretty much every organ in my body. And it, it carries the fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relax, restore part of our nervous system. So we are physically affecting our nerves just by doing simple, slow, deep abdominal breathing. We're putting our nervous system into this relaxed state. And then a third thing to try. So I talked about writing. I talked about breathing. This third thing is very, I would say, very unique to mind-body medicine and really important and really, really useful. And this is the idea of self-awareness. When you're lying in bed at night and you're not sleeping, you may not even be worrying. Your mind's all over the place. You're like, well, I don't feel threatened. Your subconscious brain has a lot of stuff going on. And it feels like eh, maybe I got a little too much going on. It may not be anything that you recognize as really harmful. In fact, we're gonna use that knowledge. There isn't anything really harmful to tell our, deliver this message to our subconscious brain. You might say a gratitude prayer or a loving kindness meditation. You Google loving kindness meditation on YouTube. There's all sorts of them. They're fantastic. There's relaxation meditations. Uh, so we work with people helping them become comfortable doing this. Just that before bedtime can, can help. But a key other thing when you're lying there is to go inside yourself and say, what's going on? You know, all emotions are held in the body, all. Whether you're sad, you're happy, you're anxious, you're angry, something's going in your body when you're going on. Where is that? And you don't have to necessarily identify what's going on. You don't have to psychoanalyze yourself. I was lying in bed the other night and not sleeping and I, went inside, just sort of said, huh, what's going on? I did this quick body scan. There's a little tension here. I didn't have to analyze that. There's fires, there's COVID, there's busy life. I don't really need to think about all that, but I'm just going to recognize, oh, that's probably where it's coming from. Who cares? There it is. I'm going to sit with that for a minute. I'm going to lean into that symptom. I might put my hand over that symptom or my hand over my heart. If I'm noticing tension elsewhere, it's awkward to put the hand. We have F functional MRI evidence now that putting your hands, resting your hands with a little bit of pressure on your chest causes a lot of the same brain chemistry as getting a hug. You're almost hugging yourself. And we can see this happen. The brain goes into a more relaxation mode. And I'm paying close attention to this. I'm not running away from this problem. I'm attending to this problem. My brain is sending a message to the body, some sort of emotion, doesn't have to be that big a one. I don't have to recognize severe anxiety. I didn't feel anxious. I just noticed a slight tension. While I noticed that, instead of telling myself I have to fall asleep, I need to get asleep right now. I need to do something. I need to do a relaxation exercise to go to sleep. When you deliver that message to your brain, you've just told your subconscious brain you have a problem. And its response is, oh, I know. Yeah, we do have a problem. Oh, you have an exercise that might help? Well, okay, yeah, let's try the exercise. And I'll keep my alarms running because I know we do have problems here. You don't want to tell yourself you have a problem. You want to tell yourself that you're safe. And you want to do so deliberately. You want to do so mindfully, really sitting with it. I'm going to lean into that symptom. I'm going to do my deep breathing. 
which is relaxing, and I'm going to notice. While I'm noticing the tension, I'm going to tell myself, I'm safe. I have a roof over my head. I have a nice, comfortable bed. I have food in the refrigerator. I have people who love me. And you might come up with your own message that makes the most sense to you. Just a few words that resonate with you that are true. We're not just doing happy thoughts here. We're telling ourselves things that are true. We're doing so while we pay attention to the symptom, just as we might pay attention to a little kid who came up and said, I'm having this trouble. If I'm at my computer and I just go, oh yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Well, that's words of comfort. That's not what the kid needed. The kid needs me to stop, put my arm around him and say, oh, I've been in this situation before. It's not comfortable, is it? But we've all been there. It's part of being human. We're gonna get through this. I've got your back. You're gonna be okay. That's what the kid needs to hear. And he needs to hear it while you're looking right at it. This is a message your brain's sending to your body. Maybe subtle, may not be some severe anxiety. You may just notice, what message am I getting? Oh, let me just be with it. Be right with it. There it is. I'm gonna lean into this sensation while I give myself messages of safety. I'm fine. There's nothing dangerous going on. My bed is warm. I'm fine. And I'm not telling myself to fall asleep, just telling myself I'm okay. So that's a brief little explanation of some of the ideas we work with. Hope that helps. Love to talk to anybody about that idea and a million other ideas uh, that uh, we love to work with here. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Perkins. I am the nutritionist and head of personal training here at Erie Parks and Recreation. Welcome, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, we are here to talk about creative ways to exercise during a pandemic. I have Lonza Dennis with me here today. She's one of our fabulous personal trainers at Erie Parks and Recreation. We would like to talk about three quick tips to help get you inspired and demonstrate a few exercises to help you stay inspired. So tip one, create a specific workout space for you. You wanna create that time for yourself. Tip two, invest in yourself. To do this, try investing in some minimal equipment. The first one we have is a body bar. This is great because you, the body bar allows you to incorporate all the major muscle groups. Moz is gonna demonstrate a few exercises that you can do with a body bar. The first one is a deadlift, followed by a row. We move into a bicep curl, then an upright row, and then into the shoulder press. As she comes out of the shoulder press, she gets into a squat position. You will notice that as she does each one of these exercises, her shoulders are down and back, core is engaged, and when she does the squat, she hit hinges at the hip. If you wanna challenge yourself with this exercise, you don't necessarily need to add more weight. We can slow it down for a count of three, two, one, and come up for one, drop down for three, two, one. Just by slowing the exercise down, you change the intensity, and you get more of a challenge. The other exercise piece of exercise equipment that's amazing is a stability ball because it supports that low back. Lons is going to demonstrate a stability ball crunch. Core is engaged, shoulders are down and back, and as she comes into that crunch, she breathes out on the, on the movement. If you want to challenge yourself further and move into a, a harder core exercise, Try a stability ball pike. This is a very challenging exercise. First and foremost, you wanna get into a plank position with shoulders above wrists, okay? And we move into that pike position and we hold it for a count of five, four, three, two, one. We come down and hold for five, four, three, two, one. And if you wanna challenge yourself even further, come back up again and hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and come down. Tip, thank you, Lanza. Those you. are great. Tip three is find inspiration and be inspired. For example, 
maybe signing up for some sort of virtual event that's part of your local community, like Run for the Cause. This will help you stay motivated and be accountable. If you would like any more tips or have any questions, please feel free to email me at tperkins at eriecove.gov. I would like to thank Lonza Dennis for joining us here thank today. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for being a part of this video. Thank you so much. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Hi, my name is Connor Middleman. I'm a nutritionist in Boulder and I specialize in the Mediterranean diet. Today, I want to talk to you about vegetables, which are one of the key features of the Mediterranean diet. I want to tell you why they're so important and how we can get more of them into our diet. So first of all, many studies have shown that people who eat more vegetables have a lower risk of developing heart disease. One study found, for instance, that just eating three or more servings a day could slash your risk of cardiovascular disease by 70%. Other studies have shown that people who eat vegetables have uh, fewer cancers, for instance, breast and prostate cancer, uh, lung cancer, or cancers of the digestive tract. Vegetables and fruits, but especially vegetables, also help to balance our blood sugar levels because they contain a lot of fiber, and the fiber slows down the rate at which carbohydrates enter our bloodstream and turn into glucose. So if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, it's really helpful to eat lots of non-starchy, high-fiber vegetables. Vegetables can also help us manage our weight. Uh, because they're high in fiber, they're very filling, but at the same time, they're low in calories. So we can actually fill up on food that doesn't contain a lot of calories. And last but not least, vegetables are very important to maintain a healthy gut flora, the bacteria that live in our digestive tract. Increasingly, we're understanding that having a healthy gut flora is essential for overall health, whether it's metabolic health, immune health, mental health. So eating vegetables can be one way to maintain this, these healthy bacteria. So how many servings of vegetables should we eat per day? Well, the official recommendation is five servings a day of vegetables and fruits. I generally recommend have more vegetables than fruits, uh, but I also generally recommend that you have slightly more than five. If you can, work your way towards 10 a day. Unfortunately, studies show that only 9% of Americans even reach the five a day intake target. So we still have a little ways to go. What's a serving? Well, for instance, half a cup of cooked vegetables or a cup of raw leafy greens like salad or spinach, half a cup of vegetable juice, half a cup of legumes or a large fruit or two small fruits. So as you see, it's not really that much and it's actually not that hard to get those five into your diet and then some. Let me show you just a few examples of delicious ways you can get vegetables into your diet. You could, for instance, start your day with an omelet that contains two cups of greens. I used a mix of power greens here, kale and spinach, uh, with about a half a cup of tomatoes, some mozzarella cheese and herbs and spices. You could then for lunch have a big salad, two cups of greens with cucumbers and radishes topped with a protein like here, for instance, cottage cheese and smoked salmon, but any other protein like hard boiled eggs, tuna, chicken salad, any of that would work. Here's a delicious snack that, that could be a good way to introduce your kids to vegetables or get them excited about them. Often children prefer eating raw vegetables and rather than the usual tired mix of baby carrots, broccoli and cauliflower florets, why not try some new crunchy vegetables like these lovely sugar snap peas, jicama, which are particularly good for your gut bacteria, raw uh, bell peppers, cucumbers or fennel. And here I've got a tzatziki dip, which is yogurt with herbs but you could also use hummus or baba ganoush or any of those other wonderful Mediterranean dips. Dinner could be a stew or a soup. Here I've made a pumpkin soup that contains seven different vegetables, uh, onion, garlic, celery, carrots, pumpkin, spinach, and the mushrooms on top. And if you wanted to make this even more filling, you could add a little, uh, for instance, Italian sausage to it or some tofu. And then finally, I often roast vegetables. Here I have cauliflower, red onions, and sweet potatoes, but you can roast almost any vegetable. Toss them in olive oil, roast them in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, and then serve them with any kind of meat or fish or other protein that you're having. Finally, 
one tip I give all my clients is to keep one or two tubs of these ready washed, ready to eat greens in their fridge, because that makes it so easy to just throw together a salad or a soup or an omelet of the, the kind that I showed you. Well, I hope this has made you want to rush off and eat more vegetables. If you want to try any of these recipes, they're available on my website, recipesfordisaster.com. The link is below. Uh, and uh, I also teach webinars. If you're interested, come and watch me cook and you can learn how to make all these delicious vegetable dishes. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Teresa Doherty with the Center for Mind Body Medicine at BCH. And today I thought I would introduce you to a mindfulness practice that I incorporate into my acupuncture sessions. This mindfulness practice, also known as meta meditation or loving kindness, is all about that cultivating kindness for yourself and others. Some of the benefits of meta meditation are that it can give you a sense of love and compassion for yourself and others. It can decrease stress, anxiety, and depression. It can reduce physical pain, as well as just enhancing your connection within yourself, with others, and the world around you. So today I've created four phrases that I will be repeating to you and you can feel free to change these words that might help better support your healing process. So I want you to get comfortable where you're sitting at, become aware of your breathing, and then also bring your focus and attention to your heart space. You can even place your hand on your heart. I'm gonna be repeating the phrases out loud and you can say them silently to yourself. And so now let's just soften our gaze or close our eyes. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be at peace. May I be filled with joy. May I be free from all pain and suffering. And I like to continue to repeat these phrases until I feel a warmth in my heart space or just this overall sense of well being. And so, with the meta meditation, you can also Extend this out to your loved ones, family and friends and animals, people you're having a difficult time with, and then just in the world in general. So I thought we would end by me extending these words to you and then out to the world. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be at peace. May you be filled with joy and may you be free from all pain and suffering. May all beings be filled with loving kindness. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be filled with joy and may all beings be free from pain and suffering. Thank you for your presence today and your awareness. Here's to your health and well being. Thank you all for tuning in to today's episode. We love to hear from you. So feel free to send me feedback, suggestions for topics, or anything else you would like for us to know at Be Well. My email address is listed below. And now for the opportunity to win a gift basket from our friends at Cedar and Hyde in Boulder. Be the first person to send me the correct answer to this question and you're the winner. It's that simple. Here we go. Instead of telling our brains to calm down and to go to sleep, we can encourage our brain to turn on its natural sleep circuits 
by giving it what type of messages? Be the first person to email me the correct answer and you're the winner. Until next time, everyone, stay healthy and be well.